finest. Juice. So you're about to go on a sold out UK tour. We are, yeah. Basically sold out, yeah. Yeah, I really guessed about it. We haven't been on tour, like, done a headline tour in quite a while. So, yeah, it's, it's very overdue. Mm-hmm. How long does this band date back? I've, I've read you started in about 2012. Yeah, we started um, in December of 2012. We just started jamming because... Um, we used to be in like different bands and stuff and then we all came together as a collective basically because of that first Tudor Cinema Club record and how, you know, like it just inspired us so much to go and write indie music and yeah, being a cold month, like December, we were like, you know what, let's get in the studio and make some music instead of like hanging down the skate park. Definitely. You know what I mean, yeah. So you're all friends? Yeah, yeah, all friends, yeah. Even after four years playing a band together. Well, it's six years now, really. So, but yeah, like, I don't know. You, you hear about like horror stories of bands like breaking up because you know they can't like see eye to eye and stuff. But that's never really been us. You know, we obviously we bicker, like you know, a, a girl and a guy doing a relationship. But you know, it just makes it like a stronger bond. And as songwriters, you know, like over the six years, we've become like a really strong thing Mm. i guess how does a song take shape usually it really depends like it just comes from like a jam usually or like a vibe like we never push it like if we go to a writing session and you know we're all like monging out and there's nothing happening then we'll just leave Mm. because you can't force something but then usually like um our like best songs are written in like half an hour 45 minutes or they're shaped anyway the foundation's made do you enjoy touring together love it Mm. love it Although it's like living on top of each other, it's it's one of the best things ever. It's so cool. It's like a lad's holiday, but on the road. Yeah. It's awesome. Do you ever find like really weird, disgusting things in hotel rooms? Um, I mean, we used to. Now we just stay in like travel lodges. So, I mean, every day is like, they're not like, like full on luxury, obviously. But, you know, you've got your bed, you've got your shower. But we used to like sleep on like random people's uni gaff floors and stuff. I remember once... Um, our, our guitarist Spencer woke up to like an overflowing bin with just like mouldy like Doritos in it and stuff. We were like, nah, man, this is not cool. Like, we need to like start getting hotels because you just get so ill as well. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. yeah. You just toured with the Hunter yes. and Rat Boy. How was it to tour with people who've got so much experience? Yeah, it was wicked. I mean, um, the Hunter, like, really, really nice guys. Love touring with them. And um, obviously, you know, it put us on a platform where we could play venues like Shepherd's Bush Empire and, like, Manchester Ritz. And, yeah, it was just a really, really cool experience, like, to be, like, thrown into the deep end like that. It was, um, the, la- it was the start of last year, so we kind of, like, shaped the set around, you know, sort of how much energy can we get out of half an hour. And yeah, it's cool. I like doing support shows because you're just there, you do your, you do your stuff and, you know, you go home. Mm-hmm. Does Rat Boy have anything weird on his rider? He loves pot noodles. He had a lot of pot noodles, like an obscene amount of pot noodles. <laughs> it's crazy. But to be fair, I mean, oh no, we didn't put pot noodles on this rider. That's such a bad thing. Why didn't we do that? I never really think about riders too much, to be honest. I, I figure you're getting to the stage where you can start thinking Yeah, about yeah, yeah. I'm just like, oh, I just put beers on it. Or actually custard creams, because they're like oh, my favourite biscuit. Yeah. So, Can't. you know, just like something to eat in the van. So let's talk about the mixtape, which has a yes. very catchy name. 89782025245. Yes. Very catchy. Thank you. <laughs> it slips off the tongue, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Did you, how did you pick, did you just button bash? So basically, 89782025545 uh, spells out high tide. There's a dash in the middle. So if you if you think like one two, so A B C D E F G H, that's right. eight, and so on and so forth. You get me? I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and we've never really explained that to anyone. Like we kind of let them work to, work it out for themselves. But there's going to be one person on Twitter I know in like <laughs> a year or something. Like, oh, maybe I should cut this bit out of the interview. Keep it a secret. Maybe you should. What do you think? A little uh, Easter egg. So tell me. It's it's your first like kind of long play. Yes. So how how did you choose the tracks for it? Well, this is why we wanted to get the mixtape out. We wanted to get as much content out before this tour as possible because, you know, as we've sold um the most tickets we've ever sold as a he- like in a headline tour, we were like we've got to kind of give something back to the people, you know, cuz we we've, we've just been releasing singles and EPs for like as you say like 6 years now, and I felt like it's not an album, it's a mixtape but like a full length kind of thing to put out would just be like saying thank you. And then we can, every song we're playing on this tour is out. So mm-hmm. if you learn the whole mixtape, then you're going to know the whole set. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Do you have any plans for an album? Possibly in the future. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, 
I feel like the mixtape is over the last year our best work. So right now I don't know what the album would be. But yeah, hundred percent obviously every every band wants to release an album, especially a debut as well. It's an exciting feeling. But we, we just I want, I want to feel right about it, you know. I want to feel comfortable with releasing a, a like a, a record like well, an album, you know. Mm-hmm. Tell me about your lead track, Come In. Yeah, Come In. Um, so that was meant to be a single back um, last, I think it was February or March. And then we kind of backed out at the last minute and we were like, this is the not, not the right thing for us to do at the moment. So we kind of continued writing and came up with things like Young Offenders and In Your Head. And then we pushed them out. But yeah, I'm I'm really excited about that track. I think it's like and just like a straight up down the line like indie pop dance track that everyone can jump to. Every time we play it live as well, like it just kicks off. So I'm really excited. Cool. Yeah. And what about House on Fire? It's the final yeah. final track on there. That is my favorite. Do you like it? Yeah. Oh, I love it, man. It's the it's the one I think that's gonna kick off in the most live. Like it's got some crazy ass bridge as well that like yeah, it's just it's really exciting to play. We played it for the first time last week at rehearsal and yeah, we all stopped and we're like, wow, like it's it's a it's a special song. It sounds like yeah. your live or or your music in general is all rooted in your live show and yeah, hundred percent getting your fans on mm. side. I think yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I think being like a kind of indie pop rock band, like that is what we're thinking about when we're writing songs. Like how would how is this going to come across live? So yeah, definitely House on Fire was one of those songs where we were like, oh, this is gonna it's gonna be mad. Brighton's finest. Juice. Juice.